Welcome to the Daybreak with Jeff Slakey podcast. I'm so happy you found us. Please subscribe, rate, review, and share this with your circle of influence. It's a collection of the interviews, news, and conversation during Daybreak with Jeff Slakey on iFiber One News Radio, KMAS, weekdays from 6 to 9. A good Thursday morning to you, the 29th day of October, as we welcome in Spencer Hughes. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Good morning to you. We are uh, gearing up. It's, I mean, there's a lot of big things all coming to a head here this upcoming weekend. Halloween on Saturday. We fall back on Sunday. And Election Day is on Tuesday. So just some things to think about there. We'll talk about that. Today on the show, we've got... uh, Shelton Police Chief Darren Moody and Lexi McCarg, who is an intern for the Shelton Police Department, talking about the Books and Badges program that's ongoing now. Also, Karen Lee from the Mason County EDC with grant opportunities that are soon expiring. And uh, this is legit. This is real deal Holyfield here. And if you have had any sort of COVID-related impacts since the middle of March, there is ground opportunities available to you. So please check that out. What's it look like in the weather today? Uh, Mostly cloudy today, a high of about 59. Mason County Public Health notified of two additional Mason County residents testing positive for COVID-19. The total now 565. Unfortunately, as well, though, been notified of an additional COVID-19 related death of a Mason County resident. Our thoughts, of course, are with the family during this time. And that brings the total death count in Mason County to 10. Additionally, according to a post on the North Mason Regional Fire Authority's Facebook page, They have two of its members that have now tested positive for COVID-19. Those are the first two positive tests received by any member of North Mason Regional Fire Authority since the arrival of the virus this year. Both emergency responders are doing well, experiencing only minor symptoms and isolating at home. They are expected to make a full recovery in the next few days. State health officials say a new COVID-19 report shows an increase in cases and hospitalizations throughout the state. Officials say if not brought under control, the spike could jeopardize progress towards reopening schools, strain the health care system, and increase risks during the holiday season. In an updated situation report released yesterday, the State Department of Health said the virus is spreading faster in western Washington than in eastern Washington, but is rising on both sides of the Cascades. Officials say estimates show each new COVID-19 patient is infecting 1.34 others on average in western Washington. In eastern Washington, the average infection rate is 1.12. The goal is a number well below one, which would mean COVID-19 transmission is declining. PUD3 reporting a major power outage impacting about 2,000 customers spread across uh, Hillcrest, Arcadia, Mill Creek, Craig Road, Story Road, Delight Park to Taylortown and some of those surrounding roadways. According to their Twitter page, the outage is due to a car versus pole accident on Craig Road. Linemen are working to make the area safe and start repairs. It'll likely be hours before the power is fully restored, and we'll keep our eyes on that to monitor. And yesterday on my way home uh, from work, I saw this. I gave you a call about it. Uh, I'm glad it wasn't anything... uh physically violent that happened but a car went into the bank of shelton building last night Uh, they had the whole area closed off according to shauna whelan on the scene providing photos three cars were involved initial information describes a vehicle running a stop sign while another vehicle reacts then hits a parked car i fiber one will monitor the story for further information yeah, and a big thanks to Shauna for so providing some photos that we have on our website ifiber one newsradio.com A letter from the Washington State AG's office has halted Olympia's plans to order a community of vehicle residents to relocate. Olympian reporting more than half of the vehicles had already left by Tuesday afternoon. That was the deadline by which officials in the city of Olympia had given vehicle residents to move. But the letter, dated Monday, says the AG's office believes the vacate notices are a violation of Governor Inslee's eviction moratorium related to the pandemic. City officials say they will not enforce the order for now, but are encouraging people to move and provide assistance for those to choose to do so. Mason County residents, the second half property tax is due on or before Monday. There is no COVID-19 extension. 
Mason County Treasurer Lisa Frazier would like to let taxpayers know that there is no COVID-19 second half property tax due date extension. In-person property tax payment transactions should be limited to only those transactions that cannot be handled alternatively. Taxpayers are strongly encouraged to use the property tax payment drop box online or over the phone or by mail, but it's likely uh, not to get there in time at this point. Yeah, with the mail for sure. There are uh, the, the, there is that tax payment drop box, and coincidentally, it's right next to the elections ballot box. So you can, if you haven't yet, get them both in there at the same time. We'll take a break here and then come back with more news, including an update on Razor Clam Digs, CARES money available for PUD customers, and we'll be falling back this Sunday. All of that and more coming up here on Daybreak. From the iFiber One News Radio Studios, you're listening to Daybreak. And welcome back to Daybreak here on this uh, 29th day of October. This weekend, as we mentioned, we set our clocks back. The other thing you're supposed to do at this time every six months is, according to the state's fire marshal's office, change the batteries in your smoke detectors. And some things to think about when it comes to these smoke alarms. They should be in every bedroom, in hallways outside the bedrooms, and on every floor, including the basement. Look on the stamp there. If it's more than 10 years old to date, replace that thing. Smoke alarms that have replaceable batteries, you can change those. If it's a non-replaceable battery, it's a 10-year battery. So that's where then you do that. And then, of course, you press that test button so everybody knows what it sounds like. I know I'm going to jinx myself now, Spencer, but I feel like it's been a while since I've heard the errant chirp of a smoke detector battery that's starting to go dead. I, I'm right there with you. And isn't that the, I know why it is annoying to get you out of bed and to, to jar you, but I can't yeah. think of a more annoying sound than those smoke detector sounds. You would think that by now we'd react to a different sound. Maybe, you know, maybe some Montavani music. What do you think? No, that's worse. Never mind. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Well, the other thing about finding, you never can tell exactly where the chirp is coming from with the batteries. You could be standing right underneath the suspected fire ex, fire smoke detector, and then you hear the chirp, and it sounds like it's downstairs. And then you go downstairs, and it sounds like it's upstairs. You'd think they'd improve that, too, what don't the, you think? I mean, somebody's going to be a gazillionaire the if they make a better smoke detector. I mean, all you need to have on it is like a little glowing ring that... Yes, yeah. you know it's green when the batteries are good, and then yeah. as it gets bad, they turn yellow or red. And you and I need a, uh, a creative gig like that, inventing things like that, because we'd come up with something far better than what they have now. Even Alexa, when she's offline, has that ring that goes around letting you know that there's no internet connection. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's exactly where I had thought. That's what I was thinking. The ring on yeah. those devices doesn't seem like it would add to the cost. I mean, you could buy an Alexa, for goodness sakes, for nothing. So let's, let's yeah, work on that. Cheap. Let's they're work on sale on today, even. Let's check them out. All uh, right, five days? Is it? Yeah, I, I, can you believe oh, that? Yeah. I, I can't believe we are five days five away days from away. the big election. Please return your ballots as soon as they're completed. As of last night, Mason County turnout is right around 60%. Check out our series of videos with the Election Center on how your ballot is safe. The information on this weekend with extended hours. We'll be airing full coverage of the election here on the radio starting at 4 p.m. on Tuesday, November 3rd. If you've not returned your ballot, everyone is encouraged to get that ballot back as quickly as possible. Washington's ocean beaches remaining close to razor clam harvests, harvests through at least November 12th. There were some test results on clams dug at Long Beach indicating levels of domoic acid that is above what the state public health officials say is safe for consumption. So the canceled digs for this weekend, and they are awaiting additional tests prior to finding out whether or not they're going to open for the 13th through the 19th. Uh, there has been... A lot of participation on this, as you can imagine, because of how, you know the pandemic and things that are going on. But please, when this reopens, avoid concentration clam diggers. Uh, you know they all kind of. I mean, there's a lot of beach, so spread out, be distant, wear your mask. 
No, absolutely. A reminder that Mason County's public utility districts were named recipients of Mason County's Federal CARES Act funding allocation. This will allow the PUDs to provide direct assistance to households experiencing a COVID-19 related financial hardship by applying funds directly to their utility account. Mason County PUD1 received just shy of $50,000 in funds to assist water and electric residential accounts. Mason PUD3 received $300,000 in funds for residential electric accounts. Customers for both agencies can apply to have funds applied to the utility accounts through this CARES Act allocation if they have experienced financial difficulties because of the pandemic emergency since March of 2020. Seahawks play the 49ers this weekend, pregame at 11 and kick at 125. Hawks are presented by Shelton Health and Rehab, Riviera's Shellfish, South Sound Appliance, Dogtown Grooming, Neal's Pharmacy, and the Shelton Athletic Club. Again, good show today here with some great guests, including Karen Lee from the Mason County EDC, talking about expiring grant opportunities that are available to you. So make sure you get that information checked out there. And as well as Shelton Police Chief Darren Moody and Lexi McCarg, an intern for the police department, talking about the books and badges program that goes on through, uh, well, this month and most of November. More Daybreak coming up. You're listening to Daybreak on iFiber One News Radio. Well, good morning, everybody. Jeff Slakey and Spencer Hughes on the Daybreak Show as we focus on Shelton, presented by our great friends at our community credit union. Shelton Police Chief Darren Moody and Lexi McCarg are on the air with me right now. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Jeff. Thanks for being here. Darren, who is this? This is Lexi. Uh, she's an intern with the police department. Um, which means she's volunteering her time and just learning about the ins and outs of the police department and what we do on a daily basis. Um, she's a student, and this was part of her, I guess you could say, senior project. Yeah. Sen- Is that what's going on? Yeah. What drew you to the police department? Um, I've always been interested in criminal justice for quite some time now. Um, and the, I felt like the Shelton Police Department, it was close to home, just felt like a good fit. Yeah. Well, Chief Moody's a great guy, and you know, I uh, hear him talking to the other officers in the police department. Uh, easy to work with, and there's there's been a lot of changes, and and I think some of the things that he's brought in, you know, helping the officers kind of make their own the badges up, and it shows a lot of uh, buy-in. I'm sure you're getting a lot of good experience. Yeah, I definitely am. So we're here today to talk a little bit more about the, the uh, books and badges program. It runs through uh, the end of November, right? Yes, November 20th is the last day. So tell us a little bit about how it's been going and, and where people can take their uh, their books. It's been going really well. Um, we've gotten quite a few monetary donations. Um, people can take those to Peninsula Credit Union or the Shelton Police Department. And then all item supply donations can go be dropped off at Smoke and Moe's or our community credit union or the police station. So when it comes to books, are, are, we, are we thinking about books or can it even be more school supplies or what's the, what's the limitation? Yeah, I'm going to hold this while you talk. Oh, you it's all on you. How's that? Make him do some work here. So tell me a little bit more about uh, the different types of things that people can donate outside of money. It can be markers, crayons, notebooks, pencil pouches. Um, I reached out to the community on Facebook to kind of see what people thought kids needed. Some said storage bins for at-home schooling, um, composition books. Some even mentioned uh, handwriting books okay. for uh, elementary school. So books, not necessarily reading books, but can be notepads and all sorts of yes. just school supplies. And yes. Yeah, basically, you know, this is all her. She, uh, we did, for years we did the uh, back to school fair where they loaded backpacks up and gave to some of the kids and unfortunately we were unable to do that this year. And so she came in my office one day and said, hey, can we do this? Um, Those kids still need school supplies, they're just not at school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, So I said, if you're willing to run with it, you go ahead. And I talked to the board at Graduation Matters Shelton, I said, will we be able to be the pass through since it's a nonprofit? Um, so it's tax deductible, number one, and number two, it's not associated with a government entity, it's its own. Um, so now you can make the checks out or deposit to Graduation Matters Shelton, and there's a sub-account set up for her books and badges. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then we'll use our staff to drive around the county and drop these off. It's a, it's a real important aspect of kind of your community policing model that you've been talking about so much over the last couple of years. A- absolutely. I mean, the kids... Are, need a little bit of 
normalcy, for lack of a better term. Sure. They've seen these SROs or the school resource officers for the last several years at the schools and now all of a sudden they're not there. So we need them to know that we're still there. Um, so when we get ready to deliver, we're going to go up to Walmart. They've been a great partner with us on many things thus far and yeah. get some school supplies and take them out and deliver. So after the 20th of, of November, and this is all said and done, Lexi, what's, what, what, are, what is your next steps? Do you have more projects through the rest of this school year or, or is this put the wraps on it? At the moment, I don't have anything else quite planned. Well, we gotta come, we, I'm sure we can come up with I'm something. we got to put this guy to work yeah. for a couple more months, huh? A couple more months, yes. Are you guys going to do Shop with a Cop this year? We got the grant from Walmart. Okay. Um, now it's just a matter of we're trying to figure out how yeah. we're going to do this. Um, it may be as simple as, because last time we had huge crowds and we're interacting. That's really not feasible. Right. So, you know, we may even just schedule appointments with the kids. You come at this time, you come at this time. Um, probably won't do the gift wrapping that we were able to do previously in the big crowd and eat together, but we're still going to try and pull something off. That's great. That's great. Books and Badges is going on now through November 20th. You can drop off monetary donations to Peninsula Credit Union or the Shelton Police Department. You can bring uh, items into Smoke and Mose or to our community credit union. Yes. And uh, there's more information on the city's police website, and we'll put uh, uh, links to this as well. Anything else that we need to make sure folks are aware of when it comes to this? Um, Tax deductible donations. Yes. Yeah. And um, anything that you can think of, if you're, if, if especially if you're a parent right now, if your kids, it looks like you need some things. Other kids are going to need those mm -hmm. things too. And you Absolutely. know what? We're not picky. If you know, there's parents out there with bins in their storage room like I had for years, yeah. you know, that if you've got lightly used stuff that you think the kids can benefit with, bring it on by. Okay. And we'll take that too. Very yes. cool. Lexi McCarg, uh, Shelton Police Chief Darren Moody, uh, during the Focus on Shelton, presented by Our Community Credit Union. Thanks for coming by. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. iFiber One News Radio, 1030 KMAS and FM 1033 presents Daybreak. Again, good morning to you here this Thursday morning, the 29th day of October. Tomorrow is another deadline for COVID related grant relief from the Mason County Economic Development Council. Karen Leaf on the air uh, via Zoom. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm good. And I was looking at uh, your website at choosemason.com. And right there on the front tab, you can't miss it. It's the COVID relief buttons. And uh, there is one for the city of Shelton. And it ends tomorrow. It is uh, available for successful applicants could receive up to $2,500. What's the details on this one? Uh, details are um, obviously the uh, business has to be within the city limits. And it's the same basic, same criteria uh, eligibility as the other CARES Act dollars. So the um, city allotted us uh, $40,000 to provide grants up to $2,500 to, um, to pay for rent, utilities, um, commercial insurance. The, the list is kind of small. It's all on our website. Um, the thing that we want to really stress to these businesses is that a grant is reimbursable. So you provide us a statement or invoice and proof of payment for those eligible expenses, and we reimburse you for that up to the maximum grant amount. That's great. And Does that makes sense. Yeah. It, yeah. It can get confusing because we've so had so many grant opportunities. Now, this we're about to talk about another one and these are continual applications and folks are able to fill out these applications. I've looked them over and there is a, a business owners should have a fair good, fairly good grasp of the information needed here. So mm -hmm. here's a question though. If somebody applied for one of the first grants and then they applied for another and another and another, those additional applications are not dinging them from potentially getting this money. It's not like a credit check where every time, you know, you run a credit report or something, there's a, there's a mark on your personal credit score. This is not like that, right? You People should keep applying for these yes. because yes. You, may, you are likely eligible. Correct. So with the state grants that we had, uh, it was the state's criteria that if you were awarded one Working Washington grant, you would not be eligible for the second round that we just had. Okay. Uh, this 
this round with Mason County, the second round of grants, they've eliminated that. So if you, you if, if you were previously awarded CARES Act dollars, you're still eligible for this grant, but you may not be or will not be prioritized. Um, you'll still be considered uh, for a grant award, but we wanna make sure that we are um, taking a good serious look at the businesses that have not received any funding. You know, the EIDL loans, the 3P programs, things like that don't, um, aren't negative, you know, in, in any factor in your application. We just wanna know, um, for, you know, it's like data tracking purposes, but yeah. um, specifically just trying to spread those dollars out to as many businesses as possible. Okay. and. Before we started here, you told me there is a lot of money available here. People need to get in on this stuff. Yes. Uh, you know, and we've done, you know, with your help, um, social media, the journal, um, we've tried, you know, going door to door to businesses, all of the outreach that we're trying um, to reach everybody that we can. This last pot of funds from Mason County could very well be the last grant that we have for our local businesses. Mm -hmm. It's um, at $300,000. And again, that's thanks to our county commissioners that have um, provided that for us. Uh, it's um, up to $15,000 this round for businesses with up to 20 employees. So if you have 21 or more, your maximum grant amount would be $30,000. Wow. So th it's an incredible opportunity. Um, especially again, for those that maybe haven't been awarded any funds. And then, you know, we've got the winter months that are coming up and, you know, there's still the COVID factor, you know, the flu and cold season, what's going to happen to those yeah. businesses and their, their workforce um, to keep everybody going. Well, it definitely appears that on a federal level, there is unlikely to be any additional help come out of the federal government at least until after the election and maybe even a little bit down the road, depending on how things shake out. So if you're looking for potential relief from the feds, uh, don't hold your breath, get in on these local dollars yes. brought to you by your local elected mm -hmm. officials. And yes. the uh, Mason County EDC here has been a great work through uh, to help, you know, when there's lots of money involved, uh, you need, you need to have a, a reputable group or organization that's able to accept the information, mm -hmm. pass out the dollars without any sort of, you know, any kind of, well, the County commissioners are doing this or the cities. This is a standalone organization that the, the EDC is in Mason County to help these businesses. And yeah, by the time we're done with these grants, we'll have um, administered through our office close to $1.2 million in grants to our local businesses. And it's, you know, all of the outreach, like I said, and the door knocking and, and visiting these businesses that we've done. I had a company in Belfair that was awarded a grant and he called and said, you know, I suppose you're in Nigeria. No, honey, we're right here in Shelton. Are you for real? <laughs> yes, because there's so many scams that have gone yeah, on. I was just going to ask can't you. Can't blame about them that. being cautious. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I feel bad for that, but it is, you know, we're local. These are local dollars. Um, you can call us, stop in to see us. Uh, we're here to help. You know, there are a lot of funding options out there, but that the clock is ticking. We're running out of time. Karen Lee from the Mason County Economic Development Council. So a couple of deadlines. The City of Shelton grant relief application with a possibility of up to $2,500 ends at 5 p.m. tomorrow. That is October 30th, Friday at 5 for this one. The next one you need to look at is going to be November 9th. Again, yes. a 5 p.m. deadline, and this is for the county. Choosemason.com uh, is the website here. You'll see it right on the front page. So please make sure if you are um, looking for funds or struggling through this COVID uh, crisis, the EDC is there to help. Thanks, Karin. Thank you. And thank you for all of your support and um, help through all of this, too. You've been yep. great. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for listening to today's Daybreak with Jeff Slakey podcast. Again, I'm so happy and honored you found us and chose to listen. 
Please subscribe, rate, review, and share this with your circle of influence. It's a collection of some of the interviews, news, and conversation during Daybreak with Jeff Slakey on iFiber One News Radio KMAS weekdays from 6 to 9. Thank you so much again and talk with you next time.